check, sound check. If you guys can hear me, give me a thumbs up. If you can hear me, give me a thumbs up. We're live doing American Cocker Spaniel yeah. tonight. Sorry, let me see. Think about this one. No, no, no. This always feels like the most awkward part about going live. I just want everybody who is actually listening, this is the worst part for me. Ah, we got a thumbs up. Yay! Good evening. Good evening. And welcome to Grim With Me on GGTV. And tonight we are doing American Cocker Spaniels. And it's with great pleasure that I get to do this with you for, for this evening. Uh, this is actually my own dog. Not my own dog. He's owned by three people. Uh, my daughter, Madison, and Sammy Hill. A lot of Canadian groomers will know her, her and myself. Well, actually, I'm not even on his registration papers, but I like, love this dog. I waited my whole life to get this little dog. I wanted a Cocker Spaniel when I was seven years old. Oh, he's just like the actually inspirational spaniel. Can you give me a high five? Look here. This is what this little dog can do. I know, and he's the sweetest thing. So why we wanted to do the wine and dine with you was for one single reason. We are getting him in condition. He's going to get his championship as soon as the dog shows start back up. As well as Sammy competes with him and Madison goes to dog shows with him. So, and I, all I do is play retrieve and strip him out and do his bevel sometimes. That's what I do, right? We have fun, don't we, my boy? He's the best boy. So every week he gets worked on. What we do is, and he did not, he's, uh, I think, 17 months, 16 months old right now. So if you have a quick look at him, condition is something that you, uh, dog show people, Grooming contest people, you people are missing the boat hardcore. I'm going to tell you that this dog has a serious amount of love that goes into him. He doesn't pop out looking like this. They're every single week. So this week is actually stripping him out. All of his jacket is stripped out. This None of this is scissor. But we do this every single week and then the other week we'll work on his bevels and his head so we can break it up because there's a lot of work he takes like two and a half hours just to back and blow dry never mind anything else so this is a constant i always call this kind of grooming a labor of love you really need to put your love into it whatever i show you here today imagine at least 20 or 30 more hours per week every week since the day the butter was born between training, standing on the table, and he still is bad about standing on the table. And he should be better. And you know, like lay upside down and get your, no, he's not the best at that. So it takes time and energy. I really can never stress that enough to you. When we start, uh, first of all, work on a dirty jacket. That's a pro tip. I never want to strip them out when I'm working on a clean jacket. I just use a tiny bit of uh, chalk. And I'm just gonna put that straight down his jacket. When I first learned how to do Cocker Spangles, I've been involved with Cocker Spangles my whole life. In fact, it was the very first breed I was ever hired to show for other people was American Cocker Spangles. And when I first, this is embarrassing, but humble, and I would like to share it with you because I want you to all be inspired. When I first started showing American Cocker this is how we did it. We used to shave their backs down with a 10 blade. I know, a little pretty, right? It did not matter what color. Imagine a little party or a buff bitch and you took a 10 blade down the back and then we wouldn't show them for two or three weeks and then we'd just rake it out and we'd show, I mean, like honestly, they had no jacket or top coat. So Spaniels need to have a jacket and a, and a top coat. So over the years, what we decided to do and then for a while, what we used to do is like thinning shear under the jacket, you know, thinning shear. And that may or may not be good on the day. But what will eventually happen is these, all these pieces will start to wing up. So we put the, the chalk on the jacket. I like to use the stone. When I'm working on any of the sporting does, all sporting does, I always, always, always use stone. The biggest reason why, remember that your sporting dog's hair is more like a human being's hair. When we're working on a terrier, the hair is, is tougher hair. Start, is there a question? No, 
Okay, if we have questions, make sure you guys give them to me right away, okay? So I like to use a stone. I feel like I've said this to you guys a million times, and I say it a million times more in case there's new people out there. When you're stripping, it doesn't matter whether you're using a knife or a stone. It, it does not matter. So I could be using a stripping knife or a stone. I'm going to use it the same way. Take my bracelet off so you can see it, okay? You want to keep your wrist tight. This is really, really key. When you, when I see people out there and they're going in and they're like ripping like this, this, all they're doing is they're breaking the hair, they're breaking down their wrist, they're hurting their shoulder, and they're snapping the hair. It's defeating all of the purposes of what we're doing. Stripping is methodical. Think of it as a creation. Think of it as art. The great strippers of this world, the people that have given the foundation for even the knowledge that I know, are artists. They never, uh, even grooming contests, the stripping rules of grooming contests are ridiculous. They want six or eight weeks of growth on it. Any good stripper in the entire world, any good stripper will tell you that you need to go keep a seven to ten day rule. So you're gonna pull the skin tight. I like to sit him down, first of all, he's kind of a brat. But this piece, I always take fairly tight on him, and this is usually where I start. I never really touch the neck and the shoulders at the beginning. And I can tell automatically, because he's in a really good roll jacket right now, but see this wave that's going down the back of his jacket, I automatically am going to know that that needs to come off. So I'm just going to pull the skin tight, because he has a lot of extra skin, as you can see. I sit him so he's sitting right exactly in front of me, and I'm going to pull that skin just a bit tight. Now, at no point in time am I going in and aggress. This part is done with love. This is the finish. This is the money. This is why this jacket, which if you guys are enjoying this, we're going to come back next Thursday. We're going to do it again, and we're going to show you him all blown out and all beautiful, and we'll do his bubbles in his face. This week is just his stripping, stripping night. So pull the skin tight. And one thing that I've noticed with Tony is he has this like crazy wave. That's another kind of pro tip is that I find groomers always want me to say, oh, here, this is how you do a hair and carpet spaniel. This is how we do Tony. That's a broad spectrum question. There's so many different colors, so many different coat types, so many different haircuts. So this is how we do Tony with him. I have to be extra careful because his jacket wants to tend to grow this way. So when I'm stripping it, I have to be extra careful and strip it really straight. I actually like to pull the top coat first, but that doesn't mean to say that I don't know some killer talented people out there that like to do the undercoat first. It's I, I, I often think that each each groomer needs to find their own way. Like right now, he has a lot of undercoat right there, so I'm having a heck of a time pulling that jacket. But I'm just persevering, and I'm going through and I'm pulling it. So if that kind of thing happens, just go back, grab a bit of chalk, and just brush that down again. Because chances are, if you add a little bit more grip to that, you're going to be just fine. And I, I didn't mention this, I don't think, but any good stripper, sorry, I have a hair on my arm, uh, any good stripper needs a top coat and a brush. Top coat brush is so important. All, all it is is a natural bristle brush. And the good old boys of the stripping land, they'll tell you, they, they would just strip them out. They just brush these jaws. And even just that, when you just take that brush and you brush that, but I use it fairly hard. There's a million different brands out there. What I personally like is one that I can fit in my hand and I can put a little bit of love when I'm brushing on it. You can see, look at all that chalk was in there and just, so back in the olden days, they just take a little bit of uh, either Listerine or alcohol and they just put a little bit on the, on the top coat brush and brush it after they were done stripping and the actual natural shine would come right back up. But I'm always taking a few swipes. And remember, like I do this with the most amount of love. I am not ever, I know that you like, I'm just sitting here talking to you, but I'm actually like really legitimately thinking about what I'm doing as I'm doing it. 
And I always do it in the same way. So I'm kind of moving down his back because he has got tons of rules on him. Mister. So then I just step back and I brush again. And now, okay, so this is interesting. I hope you guys can see this. But this really dark black hair that's coming in right now. And I haven't pulled any of his wool out or his undercoat or carted him out yet. Uh, this dark black hair, that's all the new jacket. This particular part took me forever. My entire life to figure out was, how do you know when you're done? Or how do you not put a hole in it? Right? These, these things are first of all going to happen to you. So we pulled down his jack, or the, just the top line right now. I still want to transition his rib and stuff. My next step that I always take is I'm going to take the undercoat knife. I've seen a lot of you using these particular knives as a top coat knife. They're not a top coat knife. These are only strictly for mucking and carting them out. So if you see somebody out there on stage that's ripping, all they're doing is cutting the hair off. This is for mucking, carding. You are, it's just for pulling the undercoat out. So this is the wide one. I'm gonna use that first. That's just for cutting. Um, we have a question from Alicia. Alicia. Uh, can you tell us what brand you buy? Of uh, what? Let's see. Of uh, the stones? Of uh, the stones? I am just seeing. Uh, of the stones. So there's a lot of different brands. Yeah, Okay, there's a lot of different, and these are very, very reasonably. I'm gonna give a shout out to my girl, Sally Hawks. I love these ones, these ones are great. Uh, they're, I don't even know, I think they're like 25 bucks maybe, American, something like that. I don't even know who made this one, sorry. Uh, there's another type as well though, which I personally love, by the way, for sporting dogs, and this is just, you just like a barbecue brick. You just get it and it's, you can buy it. But sometimes I like this part. We'll get more of the details. If you guys love the wine and dine and Cocker Spaniel, we'll do Tony every week. That's okay. But when I'm going to do detailing in here and his fit, like look at that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But this takes a serious amount of love. You know, it's like if you were... Like when I when I look at his face, I like to think of it more of a creation. His face gets trimmed so often that that's why he looks like that. But I take these little gentle pieces and I stone all of those little details into it. It's not because he just got a 10 or a 15 blade dragged across his face that he looks like this. There's a ton. Like, I, I, I can never stress that the most amount. And I'm not talking to Grammy contest people and I'm not talking to dog show people. I'm talking to you both. You all need a serious reality check on what kind of can, not all, forgive me. That's a wrong choice of words. What I would say is there's a percentage of you out there that need to have a reality check and put some serious work into what you're doing. There's a ton of rock stars that are killing it, absolutely. There's a lot of you that are faking it and a lot of you that need to put some more love and energy into these things. I hope that answered your question. Now yeah, we're going to yeah. just move on to this. We're going to start undercoating. When you're undercoating, and it is super important to do the undercoating on all the sporting notes. Like you need, if you don't pull out the undercoat, what ends up happening is you end up choking off those are the words I choose, but what ends up happening is you're not showing off your beautiful top coat. So what I find is that you see how he's quite woolly and it's quite wavy. If I start, and the same process again, but I'm going to start with the wide knife first. When you use this before on the other knife, we're pulling them this way. This knife, we're using it at a little bit of an angle. You don't want to have it completely flat, but you're not having it straight up. And I, this pisses me off more than anything, is when I see you guys out there doing a live feed and you have no idea what you're doing, and you're going in with this knife, and you're going in and rah, rah, and you wonder why the dog is trying to bite you. I want to bite you, actually, because you don't know what you're doing. Be nice. 
this is the rest of their life. If you make it a positive, good, grooming experience, I can never stress that enough because I get annoyed with people saying that this is a horrible experience and that they should, this is a natural experience. If you make it a good, natural experience, look at all this. And he went regularly, every single week. And that's just the why. Now look at how much hair I'm pulling out of him, but also look at how smooth that is coming down. So now I'm gonna start working up. I always generally work, especially him because he's a brat. And then another thing is you wanna make sure that you're not crossing this over. When you are taking the undercoat knife, you don't wanna cross this over and make sure you're not cutting the hair. So you wanna go with the bones. So you're gonna follow that through and say, I'm going to show some. This guy always wants to follow us. I'm just going to put a bit more chalk in his jacket. So now I'm still just pulling out the extra. And he has this, you see this crazy uh, cowlick that he has over his shoulder? That is, it's an issue. It's a thing. So we stay extra on top of it, but that's what I'm saying. Each individual dog has, but see how if I just pull enough hair out of that, how it starts to lay properly already. But I also, I'm kind of leaning, just gently, I'm just leaning him so I can properly get the right arc over this shoulder so I get the proper transition. really need you to pay attention about these things. And also the other thing is Tony's really young and he's a brat. Like he's not exactly like ready for live feed on YouTube, just saying. <laughs> but he's doing great. But a lot of that is because of the amount of work that's gone into him. Right, bud? Yeah. And also, like I'll tell you, here's a cheer. He freaked out for a second about the lights. You know, Cocker Spaniels, I can never stress that part to you enough either. If you, and I, because Tony doesn't like the light. He's fine now, but you have to just take a couple of extra seconds with Spaniels. Okay, look at how good that's coming down. The other problem I see, especially a lot of contest groomers and show groomers, you're leaving your line like, like super high up. So you, Remember, a spaniel wants to have a good spring of rib. They needed to have a good spring of rib. They need to be able to breathe. They had a job. They had a purpose. So I always like to transition the rib, not too, like, not too ridiculous and drastic, but you do need to make a transition on this. And the other thing too, I, I, I'm kind of talking to the contest people out there. But for me personally, I always have the best success on all my sporting dogs when I can trim them dirty, bathe them. Like I would always do my stripping dirty, always, every single time. Like I promise all you contest groomers, I will go to the board, I will help. I want your input, help me change the rules. Contest groomers, listen to me. Whoever wrote the rules was a poodle groomer. They never stripped a goddamn dog in their life. No one ever showed up to Montgomery County with six or eight weeks of growth. Never. Ever. So you want to strip this rib. And what you want it to do is just to slide over the rib. You want to accentuate that. And sometimes, like, I, I, I always think of, like, the party-colored bitches and also the, uh, the buff bitches. Because a lot of times they'll be more patterned and they'll come down a little bit more. So you might want to drag that down. He has a beastly coat, but he also has a beautiful rib. So we want to bring it and transition it. But you want to transition it into your skirt. They're not supposed to have a dress. Once I pull some of that jacket off, I'm going to take my wide knife again, and I'm still going to transition it. Make sure you're following the bones. Key. Super, super key. Same on the shoulders. Now, the shoulders take forever to pull down. Any good stripper will tell you this is where you 
where you can kind of get the money going on. Uh, what I like to do, normally, actually, normally I would actually, the only time I ever sit is when I pull down shoulders. But what I will normally do is I will pull the ear up and I sort of pull the face just like this. And I kind of like to bring them a little bit close. This is a little tender riddles time that you can have where they think they're having fun. Like cockers are simple. They're so simple. If you're kind to cockers and you're nice to cocker spaniels and you tell them or you can be aware of their, they're perfect. So if I just take this little time and then tell them how great he is, I, I'm kind of pulling this over a little bit with this hand. And I'm gonna pull all this shoulder down as well. It's actually already sitting. If you look at this angle, be careful not to take off the back of the neck. You want to leave that, but you need to pull these shoulders down because we're kind of out of control at the moment. And half the time, this is annoying to me personally, and I, I saw it so many times as a professional handler, more than anything. Teeth marks still in the shoulders, and you call that flat work? Embarrassing. Embarrassing. I'm talking to shoulders specifically. So step up your game. This is how you do it. Well, maybe we're not exactly part of the time. So once you get, I, I kind of go back and forth. I pull it down. Now look at that's just about 12 or 15 stripes. And you can see how beautiful that's coming down already. I don't get too concerned about where the clipper work is from, like, say, the back of the ear here. I, I'm going to transition this after. I will clean that up. But if you come back next Thursday, we'll have his jacket all shined up and bath after, and you'll see, and we'll do bevels and we'll do his face. You'll see what I'm talking about. A lot of times I have this conversation with a lot of different groomers around the world and like, well, we thinning shear and we clip and then we do this and we do that. This is how I do it. I had a lot of success in this particular breed. And I'm always happy to hear what your comments are. If you have, you know, comments that you want to share, please do. What I do want you to know is look at how much undercoat that that is in seven days. Seven days. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's constant. The other part that I wanted to go over with you quickly, not quickly, I enjoy spending time with you, not quickly. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I really do spend it. I, uh, we do Tony anyway. We work on him so often anyway, and it really is my pleasure, especially if you can start to love the spirit and understand this breed a little bit better, it is my absolute pleasure to share my information with you. So you can see right now, see the weird sound, and you see his eyes, you see how he's acting now weird? This is just, I can't make this up. <laughs> but you just, if you see that, if you just start to talk to him, watch for, watch for when that happens, with any color spaniel. Oh, boy. And I always try to keep my voice very quiet. I always try to be very calm. Even when he was happy, he used to pee. Like when he was excited or happy, like it didn't matter. There was actually no re real reason. But then you need to use your happier voice. And they're like, what are you talking about? I'm talking to two top professionals in this industry. I, I was like, you need to use your proper spaniel. And I, and I was like, Tony, you're a bad boy. Okay? If you tone it down a little bit with spaniels, you are going to do so much better with them. Now look at, see? And you saw him, he was just kind of wigging out. And just because he doesn't know what I'm saying to him, but look at how calm he is now. Oh my God, boy. So the crest. This is another area that I see you struggling by so, so much. Now granted, this dog does have a very beautiful crease. And I'm, I'm happy to be able to show that to you. There's a lot of bad, ugly faces. And he's structurally put together beautiful. He really does have a very, very nice face. Perfect markings. Nice little mush. Very pretty eye. All the things you're going to want in a cocker spaniel's head. But he has not had the top of his head trimmed in quite some time. Everybody thinks that we scissor all of this. This is all stripped. So what I do, and for me, this is a bit difficult. I'm just going to take this arm off. Give me one second. 
hard for me to do it. I do it in a certain way. So I'm going to just take that arm off for you. And then I'm going to try to come like this. Now, is that a good angle for you? Give me a thumbs up if this is a good angle for you guys. This is a money shot. You need this part. This is important. You gotta give me a money. Yeah, okay, good. You got a big spot. So I definitely will always stand behind the dog when I'm doing. Oh, but I want to just show you a quick Tony, my inspirational property. Here you go. I want you to look at the side of his from here from this side. And if you notice, if I take this comb. He has a lovely top skull. He really does. It's very nice and comes straight back. He has a lovely eye. When you're trimming the crest, he's just going to be a, a cocker spaniel. Good boy. So when you're trimming this, you want to kind of work in a half moon, in a semicircle. And I'm always going to do this before the bath. Tony, he thinks I'm trying to He wants to go play fetch. <laughs> and then I want to put him straight in front of me. And I take my stump. And I pull straight from the back. But I can see, and I'm very careful because he's black and tan, I like to keep his little tan so he looks like he has devil forks. I like that. That's just a personal thing that I like. That's my thing. Not breed standard, but I think it just adds expression to him. So now I want to focus on the back skull. This is where you want to pull it at the tightest. You want to leave a little bit of definition at the front. So I'm going to just tip his head down just a little bit. And I'm always kind of telling him he's a good dog. This angle here, I mean this side. Now this is before I have ever touched any hairs on this dog. That's why he has such a kick-ass head trim, people, because we do the homework. These are the reasons why. He is not clipper. He's not even exactly clean. I mean, he's clean, but he's not, he's not fresh off of the tub clean. Okay, so I do, now do this is, you're many people, so do this with love. I tip it down just a little bit more. But I am looking every single freaking hair. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to brush it. Okay, look at it. Come on. That's what I'm talking about. These are the details. If you hang out with me, I promise you, I will bring this to you all the time. So, I'm not even finished yet. I'm almost finished. And I really, really hope you guys want to hang out again next Thursday. Tony's almost finished. You know. Uh, what I want to do again now, before, and I'm going to tip the top coat off of his crest. I'm going to undercoat it now. Even if you're doing the ugliest American cocker in your shop in Timbuktu, I don't care where you are, and you're shaving it with a template, this will work. This will help you. Before you bath it, just take the undercoat knife. Just take their head and just rake out this crap on the top of their head. Like nowhere ever does a cocker spaniel look pretty with a ten blade up until their eyes. Backwards, really attractive. You can have pretty little spaniels like this. And that's what they uh, so Slightly annoying. Some connection issues. Yeah. Well, don't, don't come on. She said, you could play in my boy. Yeah. No? Nope. So you just go volume. Because you see what I'm on Facebook. 